Good morning, motherfuckers. Yeah, baby. We're fucking back. We're back. YouTube, I missed you. Guess what we did this week? I went to the Grand Ole Opry twice. Do you realize there was a time in my life I thought I would never, ever be invited to do anything at the Grand Ole Opry? And just went twice this week now. That is how you can change your life around, y'all. Listen, I don't want to stand up here and start preaching, but I'm tempted to. I'm telling you, man, if I can change, anybody can change. That's the worst, right? No, it's worse than blue balls. Yeah. When is. you get a sneeze sitting there and you can't get rid of it, a, that's worse than blue balls. I hope you're recording right now. Are you recording? Oh, yeah. Good. That's good stuff right there, ain't it, y'all? It's good stuff, ain't it? I'm telling you, when you get right there to a sneeze and stop, I can get up and walk blue balls off and get over it. I'll be mad about that sneeze the rest of the fucking day. You know, every time you walk into the Grand Ole Opry, it's just, you feel the immediate presence of history. You feel the immediate emotion of what this has done for music and country music especially. Right, let's go bust a block. So, dude, I'm fucking stoned. And every time I get stoned and go in there, which is every time I've been there, I just like go look at the wall because every room has a different quote. The best of America is sitting in those opera seats tonight. It's a Charlie Daniels quote right there. Yeah, dude, we're just stoned staring at quotes, man. Hope I say something cool enough to end up on a wall. Probably my favorite thing, too, about the opera is that, I mean, I feel like it's becoming my family there, right? Like, I feel like the Grand Old Opry is kind of becoming my family. So every time we're just wandering through the hallways, it's like a meet and greet with all your old friends and family. You're just everybody's hugging each other and high-fiving and it's everything you would hope backstage at the Grand Ole Opry would be. So Gary LeVox calls me. The real Gary LeVox, y'all, from Rascal Flats. Literally, Gary LeVox. He says, Jelly, I'd love for you to come sing a song with me down at the Grand Ole Opry. What a fucking start to a week. Man, I'm telling you, that's awesome, dude. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I didn't even ask why. And he was like, well, let me tell you what we're doing it for. And I was like, I'm just in. He was like, no, you're going to love this, dude. So it was benefiting the National Wild Turkey Federation. It was celebrating 50 years of that organization and federation and uh it was benefiting conservation aid so i thought it was just really cool too man and it was it was awesome oh you don't look a day over fast cars and freedom at sunset riverbank first time feeling yeah oh grand Ole you better go to your feet right there you mother <laughs> The best part is you can tell I'm nervous right here, by the way. That was really Gary LeVox singing. You smile and shake your head. Let's go. As if you don't believe me. <laughs> I wish I would have sounded that good on stage. This is unreal, though. Oh, God, baby. Oh, that's the part. This is where I admit to Gary I could never sing it as good as him. Watch this. Yeah. That I'm not comfortable doing that part. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous, dude. And he just sings like he's been singing his whole life. So he's just kind of fucking around, just, you know. But he makes you feel really comfortable. That's the kind of guy Gary is. Just watching that clip and reliving that particular moment, man. It's like, dude, I mean, it's Gary LeVox, man. You know, at the end of the day, I've been listening to that dude's music since, you know, the early 2000s. Look, Blake, you're back here. You were there. Oh, I mean, dude, listen, one thing's for certain, two things for sure. One thing never changes about old totem pole roll is we're singing, we're getting stoned. <laughs> it don't matter where we are, but we obviously respect the holy grounds of the Grand Ole Opry, so we always take our uh, shenanigans outside. The weed in the line, I just need a lighter. Soundtrack sound off, nothing but a hound dog. When the sound off, like they let a couple rounds off. Yeah. You know, one thing that never gets old is standing side stage at the Grand Ole Opry. Just staring out and just that magical circle and knowing it, you know, I'm going out to sing with Gary LeVox from Rascal Flats. I mean, I've had some, already had some amazing memories at the Grand Ole Opry. Fucking now I got to sing with Gary LeVox. That's all I'm thinking about when I'm looking out there. And I'm also thinking, there's no way I'm going to sing this as good as he does. I'm finna blow it. It's going to happen. <laughs> So we headed down to Sirius XM where we got to announce our tour, which is what a great place to do it. We got to go down to the highway. I got on the morning show with my boy Stormy Warren, which is awesome because last time I got to hang out with my boy Buzz Brainerd. You used to have to come down here to get tickets before Ticketmaster.com was a thing, you know, when you had to go on, then you had to go on the desktop. 
You have to come in here and go. You know? Oh, you're my friend. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks for coming in. Oh, this is fucking awesome. Jelly Roll is here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. So, dude, we talked about everything. We announced the tour, um, which was absolutely mind blowing to be able to process that I was announcing an arena amphitheater headlining tour. The artists that are going on the road with you for this tour, it's incredible. You got L King, Ashley McBride, Yellow Wolf, Chase Rice, Three Six Mafia. I mean, the struggle yep. Jennings, yep. a whole bunch more. You can buy tickets now. Tickets are available now right here. Jellyroll615.com, as you can see right here at the bottom of the screen. Jellyroll615.com. You can get tickets 44 cities across the United States of America. We are coming close to you. Please come see us. This fucking crazy experience I had where I got to go perform in the county jail that I was incarcerated in and go back to my old cell. I got to go back to that jail and perform. I heard that was not too long ago. Shout out to the sheriff. <laughs> right? <laughs> had this incredible moment with the sheriff that, let me tell you about it. I'm not going to tell you about it. We got a whole vlog about it coming out soon. Stay tuned, baby. I got to tell you about the day I met the sheriff in Nashville, Tennessee, and got a key to the jail. Every time somebody in this town ended up doing something incredible and changing the narrative of this town a little bit, it was precursed by, that's not country music. Do you know they had the audacity to say Garth Brooks wasn't country? Y'all hear that right? Do you fucking believe that people literally said Garth Brooks wasn't country? Crazy, man. Fucking the king. Well, him and George. Twin kings. I love you, Jelly Roll. Thank you so much. And it is the Back Road Baptism Tour. And I'll see you at our favorite restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Dude, I love Stormy Warren. I love Buzz Brainerd, I love The Highway, I love Octane, I love Sirius, I love everybody in that building, they're so good to me. Yeah, so the next day we had rehearsal down at Soundcheck in Nashville, we were getting ready for Leslie Jordan's tribute show called Reporting for Duty. A little sad, you know, automatically, just missing Leslie, just one of the best guys ever. I was honored to get to know him and call him a friend. You know how many times in my life I realize I'm too high to be somewhere? You forget that you're walking into a full production and you open the door and you're like, I am too high to be here. There is a moment in there where Mike introduces me to the living legend, the icon, Eddie Vedder. And we shake hands and I'm like so nervous. And I'm like, hey, Mr. Vetter. He's like, hey, call me Ed. And at that moment, I was like the fucking coolest dude ever. Yes, Ed. Ed forever. Ed, Ed, Ed. Just super, super surreal. Hung out at sound check. Shot the shit for a while. I went when I was too young to remember I was like four or five. And they took me to this and it ended up being dancing in the district in my childhood in the 90s. Yeah, it's, I'm fucking local. I'm really from here, you fucking imposters. Come on in. Fuck up my shot, Alex. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's all right. You, know, fucking, you, you can't shoot shit around here. Your fucking bass player walks in. <laughs> Come on, have a seat. Let's talk. Did you get a little, little afternoon rest? All right, come on. Come on, bless you, boy. Follow Papa. There we go. Dude, we're an extremely fucking normal group of people, really. <laughs> as quacky as we fucking are. We have a new puppy, and his name's Bussy the Bus Dog, because we picked him up on tour. The first three months of his life, he was on tour. Because he's a growing puppy every afternoon, he sleeps for like two hours. And he'll be on tour all this year. Once again, speaking of tour, y'all, you can go to JellyRoll615.com right now. 44 cities across the United States of America. You can get tickets almost anywhere. JellyRoll615.com, as you see right here on the bottom of the screen. Stop what you're doing now and come back and finish this YouTube video after you buy a ticket. Sometimes I go stand by the window to see if he poops so we can cheer him on. It's a big deal. I personally cheer for myself when I poop. do bush, man. But yeah, we're just an extremely, we're a very high functioning, dysfunctional family. We've always had an open door policy when it comes to family. My brother's on the way. I'm like the big kid that's just looking for somebody to let me go out and play with my friends. As soon as I go, did I do my last chore yet? May I please go throw football in the street? Except I'm fat and smoke weed. So my version of that is Call of Duty. Listen man, as advertised, I'm right where I said I'd be before I went to the Grand Ole Opry. I'm just a fucking irresponsible child at heart. My brother's on the way. Here he comes, baby. Oh yeah, baby bu Big Bubba comes to see Baby Bubba. Oh, Bubba's guy. What's up, man? What's up? Andy, I was riding horses three hours ago, dude. That's awesome. I'm a fucking natural. I was riding a horse. 
He has no clue when he pulls up almost that we're going to the Leslie Jordan show. I've gave him no information. He's just staying the night passing through from one seat to the next on work, so he didn't have no shoes. And I'm like, yeah, dude, just grab a pair of shoes. All he had was work boots. That'll work. We all we got, baby. We don't die, we multiply. We pay base kids, god damn it, what's up? Look at those locks, baby. Look at that, dude. <laughs> you nice. like that, y'all? Yeah. Look at that right there. Look at that white trash belt. Y'all see that? I'm selling these. Fire. These are for sale on the JellyRoll615.com <laughs> website right now. Yeah, I mean, dude, who really needs a belt when you got a bag? You know how much they want for that piece of leather? That long piece of cowhide? And imagine being my size. You know how much that triples? You think your belt's expensive? Huh? What about my belt? Fuck that. As long as I got a Walmart sack or a Kroger sack, dude, I'm in the game, coach. Also available for sale on JellyRoll615.com. You can find you Walmart sacks available. Just a sack. You don't even have to go down to Walmart. Get you one now and buy a ticket to the Back Row Baptism Tour while you're there. Once again, right here at the bottom of the screen, JellyRoll615.com. So we headed down to the Grand Ole Opry. So we get out of the car. And I'm looking for Ernest because I know he's on his bus and I'm like, we should probably smoke one with Ernest before we even go in here, you know, because we got there a little early because Ernest is one of my closest homies. Yo, I'm so high. I don't remember what color Ernest's bus was, bro. Dude, I was so stoned. I couldn't remember what bus was his. And I was just, I was just walking around. I think I was just screaming his name. Yo, Ern. Just trying to get his attention. Bubba. Yo, sir. Which one's Ernest's bus? Right okay. And finally seen somebody who recognized. I'm coming up, Papa. Get your ass up here. And Ernest just in there with his shirt off like he's not outside of the Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> Anytime I think I'm white trash, I just go see Ernest. And I'm like, dude, I've really came a long way in life. I used to be that bad. <laughs> You're up in 20. Get your head straight. I love you. Have you ever been so high you forgot what you were doing? We walk off that bus and I realized we were at the Grand Ole Opry for this Leslie Jordan tribute. And I mean, this is a huge, this is a huge event, y'all. This is Leslie's larger than life personality that came across the screen is exactly who Leslie Jordan was in human flesh. If I had to use one word to describe Leslie Jordan, I would use the word love. He was a walking ball of love and anything he did was larger than life. And they paid tribute to him the right way because the way this thing was ran from pillar to post was top notch. And everybody kept asking me what I thought Leslie Jordan would want. And I thought what Leslie Jordan would want is for it to feel like he was there. Because I know Leslie was a man of faith and Leslie was a man of belief. And I know that Leslie believed and was certain where he was going when this was all said and done. And I think in that honor, Leslie was there with us in spirit. And I think that's how he would have felt. And also, if Leslie was there in real life, boy, he'd have, his feet would have never touched the ground. He'd have floated around all night. All these people here for me. You ready? All these people came out here for me. <laughs> <laughs> he was just such a love, such a ray of light. I love you, Leslie. I love everything you stand for. I love the way you embrace people. I love the way you look for common denominators. I love the way you never judge people. I love your history. I love your story. I love your soul. And I hope you're proud of what they did for you at this Reporting for Duty tribute. People are just buzzing through the hallway. Tanya Tucker's out there looking like the icon she is. She's Tanya Tuckering. I seen the Grammy Award winning Ashley McBride. I seen my boy Hardy, of course, my dog. No, I've got to see my girl Lainey Wilson. Uh, I love Laney, man. Laney's one of the most authentic people here. Hey, Easter egg. I had a video come out like nine years ago called Sunday Morning featuring my friend Uncle Cracker. Laney Wilson was in the video as an extra. Hey, what about that? I got to see my boy Fancy. Hey, good. Fancy, Fancy, Fancy. That's my dude, man. Fancy's my dude. It was everything I think Leslie would have wanted it to be. I hope that's how they feel about the production. And I just said the people I got to see and hang out with. I mean, this thing was a blowout. There were so many real just A-list celebrities that signed up to do this. I think the only problem they had, when Mike Lotus called me and asked about it, I told him then, I said, look, Mike, uh, you don't realize this, but the only, he said, thank you so much for doing it. I was like, one, you're my friend and I love Leslie, but two, the problem you're going to have is everybody in this town is going to say, yes, you're going to have to tell people no. That's how much this town loved Leslie Jordan. That's how much Leslie Jordan meant to the Grand Ole Opry too. My wife and I both have very vigorous schedules and we don't get nearly enough time together. So it was really cool that she was home and was able to come out for the Leslie Jordan tribute. I'm backstage here at the Grand Ole Opry. I'm singing this song or rehearsing to sing this song on stage that changed my life. My first number one at country radio and I'm getting to do it in the dressing room at the Grand Ole Opry with my wife. It's just awesome 
to share those moments with the person you love the most. And also a lot of that was her embracing the nerves off of me, man. I, I tell people, you get an emotional performance from me at the Grand Ole Opry, but you'll never get a really good vocal one because I'm always emotional. You know, it's just such an emotional venue and it's such an emotional feeling, you know, and especially there that night for Leslie. So my wife knew that I was extremely nervous. <laughs>